Welcome to Real Talk with Reginald D. I'm your host, Reginald D. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about sow more to get more. Let's go. When I look back over my life and think about all the blessings that God has given me, I truly believe that the blessings came because I blessed and sowed into people. I mean, I would treat a total stranger like a best friend. And I come to realize that's just who I am. It seemed like every time I bless somebody randomly, within a month, I get blessed back. I need you to realize that sowing seed is good for your soul. It will make you feel accomplished. Like with me, when I have the opportunity to bless somebody, it becomes the highlight of my day. Out of all the stuff that I got going on throughout the day, the opportunity for me to sow into somebody becomes the highlight of the day. And the reason it was the highlight is because it was my assignment for that day. Now, I also need you to know that sowing into and blessing people will give you power. It will give you favor with God. I remember one time I got laid off from my job. I eventually saw this job posted that I was interested in. So after church on Sunday, I went to go find this place so I can go and apply there on Monday. I rode around and around saying to myself, I seen the street name somewhere. So I decided to quit looking for it and head home and get up Monday morning and call the business and see where exactly are they located. As I was driving back home, God spoke to me and said, look to your left. When I looked to the left, there was that street I was looking for. Guess what? This street was three minutes from my house. So I turned on the street and there was the business on the right. I pulled in the park a lot. Keep in mind it's Sunday and they're closed. God then spoke to me and said, get out of the car and walk the grounds. When I was walking on the premises, God then spoke to me and said, wherever the soles of your feet thread, you shall possess it. Now, this is going to trip you out. The next morning, I went to that place of business, walked in and told a young lady at the front desk that I wanted to apply for the position that they had open. She gave me an application to fill out. Once I got finished filling out the application, I gave it to her on my way out the door. Across from her was a guy sitting in his office with all these glass windows. He was the guy that was over the whole place. He asked the lady, who was that? She said, some guy who came to apply for the position. So he said to her, that's him. He's the one. And she said, how do you know? And he said, I just know. The reason I know this happened, he told me that when he called me back to offer me the job. I had an amazing prospering career with this company. And I believe things worked for me because of me sowing into people and blessing people. God gave me favor. So you have to realize your position here on earth. You are a powerful individual. And what makes you so special is because no matter how things come at you, no matter how many challenges you have, you have the strength and the power from God to overcome it. Sowing seed is so powerful. It is the magnet to your blessings. Your blessings will come because it is attracted by your seed sowing. You remember the saying, you reap what you sow? That means if you plant seeds or do something good, you will reap the rewards later. Look at it this way. If you plant seeds in a garden, then one day you're going to end up with some vegetables, right? See, that's what you got to do with your life. You have to sow good things into you in order for you to grow. I need you to realize if you are in a season of disappointment and letdowns, if you are in a season of failure, now is the time to sow the seed of greatness in your life. Embrace everything that ignites your power. So you are contemplating on giving up on your dreams and desires simply because you don't think you have enough to achieve them. It's not about what you have. It never is. It's about how you use what you got to your advantage. I can give a single man $100 to go to the grocery store and buy groceries. He may come out of there with maybe 10 items. Maybe. I can give $100 to a single mom, and she will probably walk out of there with about 20 items. Now, they both had the same amount of money to work with, but the single mom knew how to use it to her advantage. She knew how to max out her opportunity. 
I need you to understand that you have to take what you got and maximize it in your life. Let me ask you a question. Why do you think the single mother was able to maximize $100 more than the single man could? I'll tell you why. She had more responsibilities, which were her kids, versus the single man that only had to worry about himself. See, the bigger your responsibilities in your life, the more creative you're going to be. Let me ask you a question. What seeds are you sowing into your life? Is what you're sowing into yourself going to bring you growth? It's as simple as that. I need you to remember, nothing ever grows without a seed, and nothing ever changes without a dream. I need you to have faith in what you're doing. Have faith in accomplishing your dreams. Keep sowing things into your life that is going to get you there. Genesis 26, chapter 12, verse says, Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. God blessed him because he sowed seed in what the scripture says, that land. The word that means a specific place. I need you to understand that you are that specific place that God wants to grow and bless. You just got to sow seed in yourself and sow seed into other people. Sow more, you will get more. You are in a good place. You know your dreams and purpose in life. Sadly to say, most people don't know their dreams and purpose for their life. If you don't believe me, just ask a few people and see what they say. If they tell you something, it's probably going to be something materialistic when it comes to their dreams, such as a particular car or something. Without a dream, there is no vision. And without vision, there is no purpose. And without purpose, there is no destiny. Let's talk about destiny. I need you to chase your destiny and not just your moments. Destiny means the future that you will have. Destiny means that your future has been decided and planned by God that includes something great and important, which is you and your purpose. See, some of y'all want to choose a mate that you can be with and get the house with the white picket fence and all of that. That's fine if that's what you want. But what happens with your life once you get all of that? Nothing, right? Because that was your dream. If all you want is the American dream, then you are dreaming too small. Go after your dream. Your dreams can be as big as you want it to be because it's yours. In this thing called life, you got to be dangerous and disciplined. I myself is destiny focused on everything I do. Like for instance, when I married my beautiful wife, I didn't marry a woman. I married a destiny. And I knew that. You need to start linking up with people that understand your destiny and not just your flesh. Now, let me give you what I call the Ten Commandments of Success. The first commandment is to take your vision and write it down and make it plain. The second one is to start removing things that are going to hinder you from getting to your dreams. The third commandment is to start putting things in your life to help you accomplish your dreams. The fourth commandment is keep working the process and never cut corners. The fifth commandment is to have confidence in yourself. Believe that you can get it done. The sixth one is to outwork everybody around you. The seventh commandment is to measure your growth. See how far you've come and then keep pushing. The eighth commandment is to always have gratitude and thank God for your blessings. The ninth commandment is to sow seed into yourself and other people. Be a blessing. Sow more, you'll get more. And the tenth commandment is don't quit. Don't ever give up. Get up and get it done. Now I'm going to leave you with this quote by Dr. Benjamin Mays. And it's called God's Minute. I have only just a minute. Only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. So what are you going to do with your minute? Thank you for tuning in to Real Talk Regular D. If you enjoyed the show, please share with anyone you feel the need to take this journey with us on being a better you. See you next time.